there's also um, some debate on whether there was uh, the presence of fluid buildup around the heart or fluid buildup around the lungs. And we see this uh, in a response to um, John's observation that when Jesus' side was punctured with a spear, that we have um, blood and water coming out. Now, in the, from what I understand from the literature, um, in the, the, the Greek, um, the, the order of water and blood coming out is not, not necessarily contingent upon um, how they describe it. They're probably going to describe basically the, the larger volume first. So if it was m most likely blood coming first, uh, forth first, then the blood would be mentioned first. So it's interpreted in the medical literature there was a large amount of blood, possibly a small amount of water. Um, from what I can interpret from the medical literature, um, it's, it's believed that Jesus suffered a, a pericardial or, or a, um, a pleural effusion, which would have been just a serous fluid, just a clear fluid from buildup of inflammation in that area, um, in addition to um, the, the hypovolemia that he suffered. Um, and then, of course, you know, after his death, there was a spear that's thrust into his side um, that, that pretty much seals the deal. You know, that if he didn't die from the cross, he wasn't going to survive that, that spear thrust. Judge, let me s slip this question in before I get back to Dr. <coughs> Fuller. Um, I, and I talked a little bit about this this morning. Uh, we notice in, in the clips, and, and again, I, I, is it accurate? We don't really know. Not much is said about it in, in Scripture. But Mary, we see, is portrayed as very stoic and very silent. And, and I know that if, if I claimed to be Christ um, and, and my mother was there and they were crucifying me, she would not stand there idly by. She might say, well, he's crazy, he's a nut, he's a lunatic, but don't kill him. Um, he's a moron and, and he thinks he's Jesus and he's not, but don't kill him. Um, is, is there any significance at all to, to her demeanor, to her silence? Actually, I think there is uh, some significance to Mary's silence here, and you're right. We don't know very much from the biblical accounts about Mary's reaction. We, we see the normal human uh, emotions of, of, of sadness and somewhat emotionally distraught there. But as you say, if, uh, for those of you who are parents, if you can put yourself in Mary's place, uh, I imagine that most of you, like me, would be terribly distraught about what was going on, would be uh, you know, begging for... Uh, from leniency and protesting innocence or, or, or whatever, and, and you see none of that there. And actually, I think what Mary's silence here confirms for us is that Jesus was who he said he was. And Mary knew who he was. Uh, Mary knew all the details. And uh, so, at, at least from my perspective, Mary's silence confirms that. Dr. Fuller, I, I want to lead into a question uh, with Brandon, but I, but I first want to ask you a question. Is there any way, and, and you'll see where we're going with this, is there any way that Jesus somehow escaped death through these, this particular sequence of events and, and, and managed not to die? Is there any way? Well, you know, let me go back to, again, the road to the cross where we start to see Jesus collapsing. And when we see that collapse, we start to get the evidence that he's becoming um, hypovolemic and he is, he is becoming shockish. And when we combine that blood loss and that degree of shock with the type of hypoxia that he would have suffered upon the cross, he probably at some point in time became um, unresuscitatable. Basically, even if we had modern means of, of giving him medications and giving him fluids to bring him back, he probably would have had such ischemia to his organs that he would have died. So think of this in ancient terms. You don't have medical resuscitation. You don't have modern types of, of, of uh, medical uh, treatment out there. There's no IV fluids. There's no antibiotics. Uh, there's nothing that can sustain his life. The types of injuries that he suffered and endured would have taken his life, you know, if not instantaneously on that cross, he would not have survived. It, it would have been, would have been um, uh, not a survivable event. Then we add to that the fact that when it came time uh, for them to uh, take these bodies down, and one of the things I failed to mention before is that 
when we're talking about survivability on the cross and the people having to push up with their legs, the Roman soldiers could come by and break your legs um, if they wanted to speed up the process. And that was a, a, a procedure that they called uh, crucifragrum or crucifracture. And what they would do is break the legs below, below the knees. And we, we read that for the two thieves, they actually did this. And when they, when they do that, it speeds up your death process from days to maybe minutes. Um, you, you, know, you can't basically get any thrust to get up to take a breath and you suffocate. When they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. So they took a spear, or believed it was a spear, and they thrust it into his side. Now, from the, the, the descriptions of, of Roman literature and so on, uh, we, we believe that this was a wound that entered him from the right side that went through his lung and into his heart. And, and from John's description of water and blood coming out, we believe that that spear probably punctured his either right atrium, right ventricle area, and probably went through his lung as well. That's not a survivable injury. Even by today's standards, I don't care how healthy you are, if someone took a spear and thrust it into your heart from your right side, you would be dead within seconds. So. And, and there, I think in our conversation earlier, there is a consensus among the medical community, the secular medical That's community, correct. that agrees that there is zero probability that right. he lived. So this is from a JAM article says, interpretations based upon the assumption that Jesus did not die on the cross appear to be at odds with modern medical knowledge. That's a quote from the secular medical literature. 